Good afternoon, and, and once again, it is uh, my pleasure to be able to participate in these conferences, and I have 10 minutes to do my presentation, so let's start. So we talk about the social isolation and suicide. So I think just put you on a global map, I think that there's a suicide situation reduced by the WHO, and then we are in this red area. So I think that this where is the area which have the above the average suicide rate. So what we're talking about, I mean in Asia, Hong Kong, so we are talking about, we have about 40% of the population, but it accounts for 60% of the world death about suicide. So I think in, uh, at, the, at the rate, we have talk about 13.5 per 100,000, it's about 1,000 people to kill themselves every year. In Hong Kong, it's about uh, three or four per day. I think that is where we can beat the Australian and the American and the Australian, right? I think so. And whenever we like to bring the suicide prevention, I think, to the government, I think we like to bring in a cost element there. I think we told the government that actually, I think every 1,000 deaths, it costs about $1.6 billion as a potential economic loss, and also another 100 million in providing the mental health care for treating the deliberate self-harm. So I think that there's a situation in Hong Kong. I think the elderly, we have a high rate. I think the young people here and then the middle age are here. But what something go into this three age group? I think what we, uh, before we go into that, then we look at the 10 leading cause of death again. So it ranged at number nine, number eight, and number six. So it actually, it is getting more and more serious. But that is only in terms of the number count. But if you look at what we call the year of life loss, so I think if someone, we expected to live until 75, if someone died at the age of 60, so we lose 15 years. But if someone died at the age of 15, then we lose 60 years of the lifetime. So when you look at it from that perspective, we have to go from eight, from five to four. Now actually, when you look at this one, so it actually this public health aspect or the, the disease burden itself, it become more significant. Now we have been talking about, about the uh, digestive system, the infectious disease. The government spending huge of money. I mean, during the SARS, I mean, with the billions of dollars. But now we are talking about every year we have 1,000 people, they kill themselves. It's three jumbo jet, it crash. Okay, using a key comments. But when we look at this three age group, what are common? I mean, what we call the risk and the protective factors. I think in one of the studies we do among the older adults, I think the, the psychiatric illness, I think Gene Wu will just uh, an expert to this, but when we look through all these sort of things, and then the last thing we say that, well, the lack of the social support is just one of the risk factors for the older people to commit suicide. What happened to the 20 to, 20 to 59? Okay, I mean the presence of psychiatric disorder is also one of the, uh, uh, the high risk but at the end, when we go into it down there, when you have social support, it shows that the societal risk, it actually it reduces societal risk. I mean, if you have the social support, so the odd ratio is about 0.27, what it means is about four times less likely that you have the suicide ideation. Now, when we go to the youth, I mean, when we youth itself, I think we look at the family dispute, the financial difficulty, the relationship problem, I think all these are the significant factors. Now, Actually, when we look at deeply, when you look at the family dispute, financial difficulties, and all this, somehow it is related to the social isolation. So uh, that is the, uh, in Hong Kong, if it is represent as 18 district, I mean, that is what we're talking about. Now, Yunlong and Chimun, I mean, these are two districts. I think they are, uh, they are at the western side of the Hong Kong. I think they are more disadvantaged. They have more vulnerable people here. Actually, you can see the changes from 2008 to 2009 and then to, to 2010. I think within the metropolitan area, there's some hotspot or there's a, this, this sort of area with experience a higher suicidal risk than the others. So what we have found out when we compute the SMR, the standard mortality rate, which when you're above one, you, you mean you have higher than average, the suicide rate, below one is less than the average. We have found out that all this some sort of Wong Tai Sing, Gun Tong, Kwai Cheng, and 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 Tu Mun. But what are the commonalities among this this sort of district? 
Now, if you look at it very carefully, there's one high scene in Guntong. Now, that is the overall, what we have seen. I think the household size is just, uh, more or less the same. It's still about three people per household. But the median income, what you can see, this group itself, they actually they have about 20% or something more less household income than the average. The unemployment rate itself, they also have a higher unemployment rate than the average. I think the median age, well, I think it's more or less the same. The elderly population, you have to divide it. We show that the elderly population, the proportion itself is not significant. Then we look at this, this one, the dependency ratio. But what we have seen is the median income, the unemployment rate, they, are, they have some sort of uh, overrepresented in this, uh, this high-risk area. So when we look at the unemployment rate, these are the 18 districts. I think uh, this is the unemployment rate, this is the suicide rate. It actually, there's strong, some strong correlation. By the same token, when you have a smaller household income, you have a higher rate, okay? So then we look at the marital status, and then that is the, uh, that is the widow group, and then that is the, that is the uh, divorce group as well, and that is strong, there's a strong correlation. So when, if you look at the 18th district, where we try to compare this 15 to 24, 25 to 59, and 60 or above, and then in terms of this, I think the correlation itself, it does suggest that there is some relationship between this at a population level. At a, at a population level. So we also, we have, we have identified some hotspot as well. I think this GIS is, is really important, such that when we do suicide prevention, I think we can go to the right, to that district, or the block of the building itself, I think, to do the work. So I think that when we look at the social isolation indicator, unemployed, elderly population, less household income, divorced single parents, the recent migrants, the ethnic minority, and living unknown. Now, what the challenge in Hong Kong, I think what we have seen, it is there, there's this connection in our community. And then the challenge in the way now is how do we identify the, the effective way to connect them together. And I think what we see this physical is the isolation itself, it could lead to the social isolation. And then now we say that how can we reconnect them? So I think we cover about destigmatization of the district. I think in this morning, I think uh, our secretary, Carrie Lam, said that that's a sadness district, the Tin Sui Wai. And how to destigmatize this? I mean, those people who live in Tin Sui Wai, they're not necessarily, they are sadness. And how to go into at a community-based response and how to uh, uh, make these not to be the people who are staying there and who feel that they are disadvantaged. So we look at the enhanced understanding of the need of the vulnerable and then the, the, and the disadvantage in the community and then try to, re, try to remove the myth and also the prejudice as well. I think in our study with the London School of Economics and what we feel that it is a space. I think what, what you have been talking about the Hong Kong, we, are, we have been deprived of this sort of space, but now how can we create a space for these people? Now I think in the, uh, once the, we are talking about this split thread with 120 square feet, but they only take 30 minutes to go to, uh, to go to work. But, or you have a choice to have a 500 square feet, but you take one, one hour or more than one hour to do the traveling. Now, in, I mean, this morning we are talking about the equity. I think in Hong Kong, I don't think we're talking about equity. There's actually, you do not have a choice. You do not have a choice, we just have to live with it. We, ha we have to live with what we are given. And it's just like when you come home and then you have the food on the table and then you say, I do not like the food, you know? then they say, you still have a choice. You, know? you eat it or you don't eat it. You know? uh, so I think what, uh, there's a correction at page 28 here. I think uh, this has been one of the articles. I think it is not 1,036 feet. Now, I understand why there is a misprint there, or it could be the people from the London School of Economics, they couldn't believe how come half of the household, I think we are talking about 1.2 million of a household who live in a less than 500 square feet, uh, which is less than a garage size you know, in one of uh, the homes in Australia. You know. But you are talking about 3.1 people in one household. I think that's what we're talking about. Now, we are trying to work with the government saying that, well, if we do not have the private space, can uh, what can we do? Can we use the school playground? I think in the school, during the weekend, which can be opened 
to the community, I mean, which is uh, close, accessible, and then they can do it. So I think we have done a mentorship program enlarging the living space of these people. Now they, they are physically very, very close. I think, but emotionally, we are quite disconnected, although they are very self-sufficient, and then that is what, so we went to the school, we tried to help these young, these are young people, we bring them to our university, and then we enlarge their living space. So at the end, I think we talk about in Hong Kong, if we really want to do it, do a suicide prevention successfully, I think strengthening the social support is really important, enhancing the coping and the problem solving skill, and also the partnership with the family and the community is important. And we cannot just rely on the government to do anything, right? Sorry. Uh, so I think that as we saw the GIS is good and then the community ownership is really important. Now at the end, I'd like to show you this is hand. We, we have hands to go there to connect the disconnected. And at the end, I'd like to show you this curve. Now this curve, if we have a group of people who are vulnerable, who are disadvantaged, who are, who are suicidal. If you want to reach out to identify this group of people to make a change, it is difficult. But according to the Ross theorem, we say that if you can reduce a small risk to a large population, it will be more effective than to do a high risk with a small population. How it could be done? Now, if we can manage to move the population health to the left-hand side, so the number of people actually have problems will be less. So I think what we believe that a strong population health program is good. So at the end, to finish my talk, that is the tip of the iceberg. I mean, suicide is a rare event, but actually it is a, just a realization of a much larger problem in our community. Now, how can we make our iceberg smaller? Sorry? Climate change, yeah, exactly. There's a change in your environment. Change to make it as a warmer environment than that. So that is the good thing about the global warming, you know what I mean? Make it smaller, then I think we will be better. Now, in Hong Kong, I was told by the minister that you have to tell something good about our government. No? Anyway, so actually, we are looking good. Actually, the suicide rate at the historical high here, I think within the five years, our suicide rate has come down by 30%. Now, we have not seen it in any part of the world. I think Hong Kong has done it. Well, Hong Kong has done it is because those who are involved in this, including the government, I mean, who make the differences here. Thank you. Thank you.